Uncle Adam and I's newest game, Death Wizards, is here. So today, we're going to paint up a necromancer. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it, Vinci V. That's right, our newest game, Death Wizards, is available now. And this is a dark fantasy game of necromantic skirmish combat. Whether you're playing against your friends, vying for supremacy in the dark arts of necromancy, or whether you're engaging in some story mode and uh, trying to both uh, kill towns, topple kings, and build your empire of the walking dead. Uh, well, that's up to you. But either way, you're going to need a necromancer to lead your band. Now, there's lots of different necromancers in the game, but my particular favorite is the War Reaper. A necromancer who blends a little bit of martial combat with their magical skill. So today, I'm going to use this model from Games Workshop, and we're going to paint up a fun, awesome necromancer that's going to be the leader of my horde. Let's head over to the desk. Let's get painting. So this is the recent vampire model from Games Workshop, Sekar or something like that. I don't know her name, but she's pretty cool. Now, normally she has a snake. I didn't use the snake. I just wanted the necromancer. So uh, we're going to start with the skin. And what we're going to do here is begin with some deep, uh, sort of medium purple tones. And what I want to get is that vampiric flesh. Now, in this scale, uh, we're going to build up very slowly. Basically, I start with this purple, and then I start integrating in some reddish gray, and then eventually a little bit lighter bone color, ending at a sort of green gray, this very bright color, as my highlight mixing with the purple. Now, that might seem like a strange sequence of paints, but in every one of those things, there's a little bit of chromatic harmony. So I start with the purple and just get it layered up, basically base coating, you know, covering everything. That's just to lay down the base tone because I don't want to work over the black, and also to sort of be the deepest shadow, shadows in the skin. Then from there, I start integrating in the reddish gray and then eventually the bone. Now the key is with both of these highlight layers, I'm still including purple. And in fact, in everything I do here, I'm going to include this original violet purple color because I want to slightly tone each of these a little more into the purple and make them aligned. Each time I'm covering less and less, working in thin layers, there's not a ton of skin exposed here, but there's enough that you want it to stand out. I want her skin to be very pale, very, very, very uh, vampiric, uh, because I think it's just going to look pretty cool. Once I get my highlights in place, as I've worked through those again, including the purple, covering less and less, working in multiple thin layers each time, I then am going to finally integrate my brightest highlight. Now, as I talked about recently in my Understanding White video, we're never going to go to pure white, but in this, you're going to look at it and think, that looks a lot like pure white, but it's not. This is actually a green-gray color as my highlight. I still mix this with a little bit of purple, but again, I focus it in here on just the highest highlights of so the center of the face, the tops of the shoulders, uh, the very tops of her sort of very pronounced hip bones, all of those kinds of things that would be, that are sort of sticking directly up towards the light. And once I have all those highlights knocked in, we've got a pretty good progression. Because we were working through these soft grays and we were working thin, honestly, we don't have a great need to go back and smooth it out. So instead of going to glazes, we're instead going to do something a little different. Our next step is going to be to bring in some life. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in just a little bit of red. Now, here I'm actually going to use a sort of cold red, a more magenta type color, and I'm going to work it really, 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 really thin. This is so thin. Uh, this is about four drops of water to one drop of paint. And I'm going to work this red in very thin, again, applying multiple filters or glazes over the areas I want to cover, slowly increasing the amount of this red tint. And I'm going to work, as you can see, in places like her cheeks, uh, in places like the back of her hand or in between the bones in her hands, things like that, where a little bit of that red tone would show. And the idea here is to bring some life into the model. We as humans recognize the color red as being the color of life. Now, she's sort of a vampiric necromancer in my mind, uh, so as a result, she does have blood. There's blood in there somewhere. Uh, it's kind of the whole thing with vampires. 
and uh, I want to make sure that we capture a little bit of that. By adding those soft, subtle red tones, not only do I smooth out all my layer lines that might still be there from the previous work, but I also then add an interference color of this very uh, nice, life-intense red that makes it both more visually interesting, compelling, and credible. With the skin done, it's time to turn to the next major element. And here we're going to use do her armor. So here I've made a custom mix of gold. This is basically my gold recipe from my uh, my best gold ever. Uh, I altered it slightly as this time I'm using the bronze pigment from Green Stuff World, but otherwise it's basically the same recipe. I wanted a slightly more uh, brownish tone than yellowish tone, hence the, the bronze pigment. Now the beautiful part about this mix is as you can see, it goes straight, like I'm working straight over black here. And one coat, boom, bang, we're ready to go. Beautiful, shiny, just, just kick you in the face gold. And I love it. Uh, and once that's in place, uh, that's going to then get me uh, the base tones for what I need. Now, of course, as all things with gold, we're not going to stop there. We're going to take it to the next level because we've got to take back control of the light on this because too much of that ultra bright gold is going to look a little fake. My next step is to get out two different brown colors. Specifically, I'm using Pro Acryl's Warm Brown and Pro Acryl's Dark Brown, or Black Brown, sorry. Uh, in both cases, I'm then going to create some gentle shading on the gold. And you'll see I'm placing this in those areas that would be sort of not directly in the light. So the underside of her chest plate, under her breasts, uh, on the underside of her helmet, the offside of the reflection on her big, giant, ridiculous helm, all these kinds of things. Once again, working very thin. Now, <clears throat> the metals are very, very glossy. As a result of this, I'm using a paint because it's quite matte and because I need it to actually grab a hold and stick to that thing. Uh, there was a time when I sort of used a lot more inks in trying to shade my gold, but I found the inks would often beat up or not properly attach the better or higher quality gold you were using because it's a glossier, more flat surface, and the inks, liquid medium, and all of that, liquid pigment, and everything else that's in there, didn't really make it want to attach. Using a paint I find much more compelling, uh, much easier to work with. So I build up first the warm brown, working my way around, really just adding those nice red tones into the mix, and then, where I want the really deep shadows, I come in and use the black brown. And here, this is covering less, and again, I'm working in glazes. Each of these areas you see shadowed was probably about three different glazes that I did over each individual area, just working my way around the figure, and by the time I got back to where I started, it was dry and I was able to do the next layer, or the next glaze as it were. But just keep working your way around until that gold is toned and the shadows are placed. With the shadows placed, we've got to then add some highlights. So here I'm mixing in a little pale burnt metal from Vallejo Metal Color into my existing gold recipe. And you can see I'm just going to kind of stipple it around and hit some edges. Now, this is a very quick step. Uh, we're really not wanting to make this huge. We just want to really bring the light and that specular reflection into those parts that would be the most reflective. So the tops and edges, uh, the upward facing elements of the miniature. Now I'll go back with some very pure pale burnt metal and edge highlight the very top facing edges. So the very top of the arm armor, the very top of the headpiece on those edges, things like that will get an extra kick of that pure, almost silver, so that way we get that true white reflection out of there that captures the specular highlight of bright, pure gold when it's hit by the light. Next up is the red cape slash tabard slash headpiece. I don't know, all the cloth that we're going to turn red. And I begin here by just base coating the whole thing with some uh, uh, dark red. This is uh, Pro Acryl's Burnt Red, but any sort of dark hull red will work, any kind of intense red-brown. And the reason I'm starting with this color is, one, it has a much higher opacity than your traditional uh, mono-pigment reds. Uh, it's much less transparent, so I get much better coverage. Now, it does still take me sort of two uh, thin layers here to build up to full opacity, and I do want to do that because I want it to be nice and strong. Once I get that pure red fully in there, and I have those base layers down, my next step is going to be to knock in some shadows. Now in this case, I'm going to use black. 
This is oftentimes, I think, something people shy away from. But black is actually quite a striking color to use as the shadows on your red. Certainly you can use chromatic shadows as well. Uh, things like purples or deep browns can be used as your shadows on red. You can even mix in green tones to, to make complementary shadows. But in this case, I want really stark contrast, so I went to black. And I begin by just glazing that in on all the literal downward facing areas. Now, note as I'm putting this in, this is going to look like crap initially. Uh, this cloak will look really bad before it looks good, but you're just going to have to trust me and stick with me. I promise you, we will get somewhere good. Once I knock in those, uh, those shadows in there, my next step is to then take the most upward facing layers. And here I'm going to use the red from Atom Paints. Uh, this is sort of a new range, which I'm still playing with and working with. A review will be coming in the future. And I'm going to uh, use that because I really like this red tone. I'm going to use it as the sort of primary upward facing light red. So I just layer that on. Now I could stop here and it would be fine but that's not really intense red enough. It still kind of looks weak, and of course it's messy. I'd need to go back and clean it up and stuff like that, but that's not really what I'm concerned about here. Cleaning up is just some glazes at the end. What I'm really concerned with here is I need to get, I want that red to really have some life and some punch. So we're gonna use one of my favorite tricks. I begin by taking white blue from Proacryl and layering it on the highest, highest, highest highlight areas, and I know this is going to look bad. We're suddenly in Clown Fiesta territory. Again, just trust me. So I layer in that white blue and just basically sketching out the areas where I want my highlights. My next step is to then take some fluorescent pink, again from Proacryl, and I'm going to paint over that whole area. So all the white blue instantly turns pink. And I'm going to take that pink and paint it over onto the red as well. It'll just cover the whole area, basically covering everything that was red and is white blue in this fluorescent pink. Now, this will look weird, and again, it will look splotchy and strange. I do, I do two layers of the fluorescent pink just to make sure it's nice and there. Then I go back to the atom red. I thin it down a little bit, not tremendously, but a little bit. And I'm going to then do about three thin glaze layers, like something in that range, over that pink and you'll see how now all of a sudden it just really pops. We get this bright, intense, saturated red. Because the fluorescent is underneath there creating that pop, we really get that beautiful, intense, striking red. After some cleanup, we're really ready to go. And with that, that's all the main elements done. I do uh, the rest of the things off camera, so the little gems and uh, you know, just like there's, there's a couple elements like her spear staff and stuff like that. Um, the weapon face itself. Um, but those are the main elements. I wanted to take you through this because I hoped that you could see how I did this quickly. This whole figure took me about two and a half hours, maybe three total. So it was pretty fast. And I think it came out looking pretty cool and pretty fun. And the, and you don't need a ton of time to make a good looking fig, especially for, uh, you know, a game. And what it really takes is just a plan and a few simple tricks. With the skin, our trick was to integrate hues, colors, into the various whites and purples, so we were or into the various whites and grays, so we weren't just dealing with flat gray skin. Having the purples, the red gray, the green tones, all of that makes it a lot more chromatic and adds a lot more life. Same with the red filter at the end. With the gold, we started with a really awesome punchy gold recipe that was super bright and shiny, so we already were so much of the way there. It didn't take me a lot of time. I didn't have to put on multiple layers. I could just get right to the business of applying some quick glazed shadows and punching in some simple highlights. With the red cloak, the key there was just some fast quick layers with that white and then the fluorescent pink and then the red back over top to really get a highly saturated, eye-catching from, you know, 10 feet away red that really makes the figure stand out. Simple tricks like this can make your gaming figures be elevated. So even though they don't take a lot of time, integrating some of these types of tricks, you know, more color, uh, better sort of brighter metals, and uh, more intense saturated colors where you need them, really will help elevate your army or your figures for whatever game you happen to be playing without extending the time it takes to paint them. 
Here's how the model came out. I hope you like how it looks. Uh, if you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. If Death Wizard sounds cool to you, a dark fantasy game of necromantic skirmish combat that can be played in against your friends or solo or co-op, hey, guess what? Check it out in the link below. There's also another video uh, uh, that, all about this that announces it, that talks more about the game. That's also linked down there. You can check that out. There's also a battle report. Uh, so if you go through the website, you can see a battle report there as well, if you want to see how it plays. So check out that game, as well as all our past games. Adam and I make a new game uh, every year, and we are really excited about this newest one. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy them. I hope you'll give it a, give it a look. Uh, if you want to support the channel, lots of ways you can do so. You can pick up your hobby supplies from the affiliate links down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it often saves you money and... Uh, that helps give the channel a little kickback. You can join our Patreon, which is focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. As always, though, I very much appreciate you watching this one. I hope you enjoy the new game, Death Wizards Forever. And as always, we'll see you next time.